So now that we've verified our installation and initialization of the ACS servers, we want to go ahead and get that primary and secondary server uh, communicating with each other. And the way we do that is via the web browser or the uh, ACS web interface. Um, if we go ahead and get into our primary device here, we can see how an, uh, a local mode or independent or standalone ACS server uh, looks after uh, being initialized or how it's being postured. So we log into this device here. It is self-signed, so we have to we'll get this security certificate up here. We will log in with our default credentials. And to view how uh, installation of a device or ACS server is postured, we go to System Administration. Under System Administration tab, there's the Operations drop down and from there we take a look at the distributed system management option and we can see from this list that only one server is identified here and it is ACS1 this device itself it's postured in the primary instance if we take a look at how this is configured here it's got the local Mac um, it's reachable via 443 and its role is primary so to actually uh, identify secondaries and get the secondaries to register with the primary, we have to do it from the secondary device itself. So let's log into that device. Just a moment. And continue. Log in with our default credentials again. And on the secondary device again, if we take a look at how this one is postured, we can see that it is also configured uh, out of the box or uh, newly initialized in the primary as a primary instance. Um, so pretty much the same information. The way we change that is again over here underneath the system administration tab underneath operations you have local operations and under local operations you have these deployment operations uh, this option here. If you select that option here's where you can identify the primary instance uh, within the distributed uh, setup here. So 192.168.3.11 is our primary server we will use our generic uh, username and, and password here. And we'll go ahead and, as simply as pressing this button, register with the primary. Now, in order to do this, the secondary will need to reload itself um, and then register with the primary. So we select OK for that. and it should be going. If we take a look back over at the primary at the distributed system management tab we'll wait for it as those two start communicating with each other. And we see that uh, we have ACS2 now showing up as secondary. Now it's rebooting uh, its processes so that that start application uh, or show application status ACS um, command that we showed uh, previously in the CLI. Uh, all of those processes are restarting on ACS2 and then the configurations on the primary ACS server are going to be replicating over a full replication over to ACS2. And if we give this a, a few minutes we'll see exactly uh, how long that process takes. Okay, that took a lot longer than we had expected, but uh, uh, we can see now that the full replication process is completed um, between the two ACS devices. So now, whenever configuration changes are made, you do it from the primary instance, and then those get replicated over to ACS2 or the secondary ACS device. Um, just to note, ACS, secondary ACSs and primary ACSs um, the communication path there is between the secondary ACS and the primary ACS. There is no communication between secondary uh, ACS uh, service. They just 
they have no awareness of each other. So it's up to the primary to replicate that information down. If the primary becomes unavailable at some point in time due to a network error or actual device error uh, with the primary server, the secondary servers, however, they, however many there are, will operate in what's called local mode until they have that, uh, until they're restored, uh, restore the connection back to the primary ACS server. And, uh, and so that's pretty much how the distributed uh, system configuration works.